Yeah, hello everybody. I hope you had a nice break. Um, my talk is about networking and tracing, and uh, I, my name is uh, Alexander Arink, and let's start. So uh, the topics I want to discuss is more about my use case, which I have, and some things I, my tracing use case, and some things I was uh, going over it. I was using the P, uh, time synchronized tracing. I don't know if everybody's familiar with it. You can actually have uh, try, um, time synchronized tracing over among of uh, different machines which are doing tracing at the same time. And then you have the events in order coming in. Then, um, yeah, because my use case has more to do with distributed networking tracing, um, I was thinking about how to bring the tracing buffer to a remote machine and how to access this buffer then. And uh, when we have this, then I was thinking about, um, yeah, it's going over a networking interface and a networking interface has a tracing offload engine. And I have, I got some more ideas about it. So my main use case, I already said, it's about distributed tracing. So the person here, it's me. I'm sitting in front of my computer with a um, monitor and I have a tracing application and I want to trace a cluster. For, for example, a Linux cluster, which uh, has uh, several nodes. And those nodes are connected over a LAN. It doesn't need to be an IP protocol. Uh, protocol involved. It can be also only link layer because I don't have any routing or something like that. And uh, those votes um, have time synchronized tracing with a global uh, clock source. And um, yeah, I, I was thinking here when those nodes need to get the tracing buffer to my uh, user machine, we need to have networking involved. And I was thinking about to have directly the tracing buffer on the networking interface. And when it uh, arrives, the networking interface on the user side, then why we cannot just do something like filtering or classification. So the PTP implementation in TriCD, I already used it. I did an uh, announcement uh, several years ago about my distributed log manager viewer, which is my protocol, which I want to uh, trace over in the Linux cluster. And for me personally, I, I tried to use it. And uh, when I have the machines in a virtual machine and using the VSOX, there's different kinds of um, how you can do the tracing, uh, time synchronized tracing. And the KM, KVM method, which is not using PTP, it always works. Uh, it was uh, using some KVM uh, cl uh, clock source and over VSOX, but this only works with uh, the virtual mo machines. But um, when I was looking into Trace EMD and wanted to have it on a network, like I showed you with the, with the LAN, um, I, don't, I cannot use this. I need to use PTP and also TraceMD has a, PC, a PTP implementation. And then I looked into the source code and I was seeing that uh, clock get time is uh, is done in user space directly in TraceMD. And uh, I, I see that there's, there's probably a big error gap because we're doing this clock source, the, the clock get time in user space and then we have OS noise involved like scheduling, queuing up things. And what you really want to have is that when you transmit the PTP uh, message, then on the NIC, the time, the time stand is done to uh, reduce this error, not in the application. And um, yeah, why we care about this, because when we, want to trace the Linux cluster, then we have always causality um, correctness, like action and then followed reaction. And um, 
I, I think when we get in the ideal case, when we get the accuracy of uh, PTP under nanoseconds and we our clock work source get is uh, warning in nanoseconds, then we have directly causality involved. And that's why we need to care about uh, to have the accuracy of um, PTP best as we can. So then I was thinking why we don't use Nick uh, Habi's timestamp. This is uh, this this is done what we want to have. So the, the timestamp is done directly on the Nick. You can get this over auxiliary data on the on the socket, and then you're getting that. And the, I, I think I'm not a totally PTP expert, but I, I think we we can improve the trace CMD. PTP implementation by using that. And then also a Nick, a modern Nick has also a PHC, that's the physical hardware clock that's uh, abstracting like a, they work like a POSIX clock. You have adjust time, but always when you want to get the source code, uh, the, the clock, then I, I think it costs you a lot of time to get that. And, uh, but I was thinking about why, uh, why we cannot use directly the Nick PHC. Also, there's there's also a term which is uh, time sensitive networks. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research into that to uh, knowing the time of every uh, machine in your network. And then this has a lot of to do with Linux PTP. And I, I don't know the Trace CMD, how it's currently working is that it only save the uh, timestamp offset as a metadata on your recorded traces. And there is no real global clock, which is uh, synchronized as uh, minus C. But uh, I, I think this has good reason because you want to handle that only in user space. It's a whole user space concept with um, handling the time synchronized traces. Um, but I still think about how we, how we can maybe use Linux PTP with uh, they have several tools and then you can uh, synchronize blocks with it for for example HT to sys that's for um, synchronize the system clock but we are also keeping a clock in the trace CMD um, user space tool. And why not synchronize that uh, after some interval? I know there's a t-sync interval argument as well. And uh, may I was not looking into that, but I think it's already good to uh, know to make the hardware time stamping. So that, that was my point about PTP um, in Trace EMD and how how to transmit. So now I want to talk more about we need, we need somehow to get the tra uh, trace events to a remote machine. Uh, again, I'm somehow the client here. And then we have the agents in TraceMD. You have these agents and the minus A command. And then it records the, the nodes here. And what I was thinking about why we cannot, why we, how much data copies we have there. I think we have at first from TraceMD, from tracing buffer to user space, and then putting it into the, the socket buffer there, we can maybe get rid of this with splice, some splice magic. I'm not sure this, but this will only connect the tracing buffer in the kernel to uh, uh, to a socket. And they're still a copy because you always have the tracing buffer. But then I was thinking about why not directly operate to get rid of the tracing buffer and directly filling the um, the NIC hardware. And yeah, but you can already see on uh, the networking side, they have uh, a special page pool also, which uh, offers you uh, struct pages which are directly DMA mapped to the NIC ring buffers. And the NIC, they have several ring buffers, so you, you need to fill them up and then you can transmit them. And then, yeah, 
but this is only for the raw tracing data. We still need to think about what we do with all the metadata of trace uh, of TraceFS. For example, we can, when we have the raw trace data, we don't uh, we cannot interpret the data yet. But uh, we need also to somehow to the client to the remote machine to transport the metadata. And yeah, there was. I already um, was mentioned that on the mailing list, and they, directly they came something with um, the we have a lot of we don't have any cache locality because currently how the trace buffer works that is uh, that we have a pair CPU buffer, but when we have a, a NIC attached, then this NIC is probably on some NUMA node uh, attached. When you have when we trace on a different CPU. On, and then um, want to transmit that, that it's, uh, it costs you time because it's not directly attached. It needs to go over the, the other CPU and then where the NIC is attached to the normal node. Uh, but in my opinion, this is a general networking problem that people want to handle better. They currently handle it like, uh, yeah, you need to pin something to the CPU where your NIC is attached to. Um, I don't know if something similar can happen with, uh, with tracing, but I, I see for my use case, which I have, maybe we don't care because um, we need to transmit the tracing data anyway to the network, uh, to the NIC, to the remote side, and uh, the trace, the user sees a stream of uh, trace events and want to get them fast as possible and the, lo the machines are not interested into tracing. And yeah, when we having the raw data, tracing data arriving on our NIC, then we can use something like, like AFXDP. This is a socket buffer, which is express data pass. It's named express data pass. And it, this is directly operating on the NIC buffer, but I also see that currently there, there are some just got merged into the Linux kernel with uh, TCP dev mem device memory. That means that uh, uh, the payload of a TCP is um, is also directly accessible over the NIC buffer, and there's no copy anymore. And yeah, I was thinking something like a Wireshark. When we have that, then we can directly use without any more uh, things um, to be changed. We can use Wireshark as a user space tracer. I know there's a project around kernel shark, which uh, is somehow uh, this, uh, the pardon to Wireshark for tracing. But uh, yeah, but uh, in this cut in this scenario, we maybe can use Wireshark, and Wireshark has these disk sectors. That's according how how the uh, protocol data, the raw data, is interpreted, and I think we can use the trace uh, tracefs to directly uh, build a D sector during one time. And yeah, when we get the tracing data, they um, a NIC has always a egress port, uh, ingress port. Egress is outgoing and ingress is incoming. Yeah. Wait, um, Alexander, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, real quick. First of all, quick question: Do you know any of the Wireshark maintainers? No. Because I submitted believe, something to Wireshark. So, way back when, I think 2009 or early 2009, I sent an email to the Wireshark developer list saying, "Hey, you know, uh, it would be great if we could hook Wireshark to the tracing systems. Would you be um, interested in anything?" And all I heard was crickets. Um, I got nothing back, nothing there. So that's when I it was inspired to write Kernel Shark. So Kernel Shark was just because the Wireshark, if the Wireshark park uh, people came back and said something, Kernel Shark would never existed. Just FYI. So that's why if you, that's, I would love to have Kernel Wireshark to be able to hook into something, but I don't know any of the maintainers. Anyone here know any of the Wireshark maintainers? So actually, the networking people are here. I should, I should go around asking them because that would be something I would be happy to have or happy to help with. So, but 
If, the, if you can't yeah. modify I, Wireshark, I don't know. I, I don't know how, when we make it so that it uh, looks like a normal networking interface, and then we say something like, okay, this is my protocol. The trace, the trace data is my protocol. I don't know uh, how much they, it, it, it sounds for me that that's what uh, trace uh, Wireshark is made for. But uh, okay, when they, we, maybe we can bring this topic again up, hey, up on the mailing list with them. Yeah. Yep, we'll get to you. Yeah, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was also this. There is in the in kernel, there's actually an interpreter for making filtering on trace events. I, I showed you the, the .c file. Uh, I think there's also, of course, other ways to do that. But uh, I, another way would be then, because I said that uh, when you getting the, the tracing data or on your NIC as a receive, you can directly filter out trace events because uh, a NIC has mostly some generic um, offloading mechanism. Like in uh, there's traffic control, it has um, U32. That's a very basic classifier. That's only masking shift and compare operation. And this combination of trace FS and uh, a nice uh, CLI interface or a GUI even, then you can directly, oh yeah, I want to form this specific match for my trace event and it pops out your uh, TC commands, which then getting involved into your NIC. And then I think you can match on some trace events. And then when you can match, then you can run actions like drop. And um, there's also classification, which is my use case. Uh, you can give uh, trace events a unique number. Or there exists also a P4. That's a programming protocol independent packet processor. There's several ways. And then you can, you can do that in software, but you can also say, OK, Mr. White Nick, you can say offload that to the hardware. And then uh, we don't interpret in a minimum anything anymore on the CPU. And yeah, it's only U32. I talked about it when it's only a bunch of TLVs. It should be very simple to do that on an Ethernet frame. For example, an Ethernet it can be also some other link layers. Um, and uh, MARC is for classification of trace events. Like I put uh, when specific fields has a specific number, I want to give them um, in general a, a number to hash them. And you can also uh, redirect and other, other things. And I was ask, asking me maybe even a local case where we have the cache locality problem could be useful when you have a lot of offload things to do. I, I never tried it out yet, but uh, you need to see. And um, as next, I want to see into the Trace EMD PTP implementation. And I think to have the hardware timestamps, that would be the first step to get that I get more involved into this implementation. And then how maybe I can uh, combine that with Linux PTP because Linux PTP, PTP is not, I would say it's not simple because I, I also was hearing some talks about it that uh, they have some uh, PD controller. They have some PI controller, forgot the there's some controlling mechanism. And this is a lot of re research um, involved to have the starting problem and that it doesn't oscillate so much and have the error rate of your time synchronization very low. And as next, yeah, with the uh, Nick Ring buffer, I would forget about this Nick Ring buffer, but I would catch up what uh, Steve already said before to have something like Wireshark, to have a virtual network interface that we have the user space view about a networking interface, which offer me the tracing data, and then try out Wireshark, also trying out filter, big filtering, because I said before, yeah, there, there's always uh, software solutions. 
And with U32, you can try out if you actually can filter, you have a different approach to have um, the kernel interpreter running. And then look afterwards, we can look um, about how operating on real hardware and sending it to motor machine. Yeah, and that's it. So are there any questions? Yep. Uh, discussions yes. about this idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, one thing I'm not seeing here I'd like really like to see is benchmarks because you're assuming that by sending things over to the NIC and offload computation of filters and stuff like that, you're, I guess, making things faster. But I would say, well, yeah. I, I would presume that keeping things CPU local and, I mean, keeping in L1 whatever you have as data set to perform the filtering uh, on the CPU would be faster, but then so yes. so you you'd really need to bring good convincing benchmarks to show that it's actually better to try to offload or send it farther away from the CPU from a tra tracing perspective. Yeah, but one of the problems yeah. that he's dealing with is not just speed, but the accuracy of the timestamp. And I think one of the problems is he wants the accuracy of like when the, I believe some of the changes was very NIC uh, centric, where the uh, the NIC actually added the timestamp to the yep. uh, so yeah. I mean, for, for the timestamp part, I mean, what you want is correlation points between whatever time source you have locally in your machine and what time source you have on the NIC. So if you could bound those communication points, maybe that could help you. It might not have to be all the events that carry those NIC uh, uh, timestamps. Before, uh, time's up, if there's any last question, let's do one more question and we'll do time. I'm just curious, Alexander, did you look at using XTP maybe as a mechanism to send events out of the war? Yeah, I think you mentioned AFXTP, but actually triggering an XTP program perhaps, would that be something that might do the trick? Mm. I mentioned FAXTP here only because it directly operates on the, on the NIC buffer. And then with, with the action, yeah, yeah, I could want uh, some uh, um, some filtering, some uh, matching also, but uh, I only mentioned F FXDP here because uh, I get it easily in user space directly from the NIC. That's what um, I'm doing. But uh, with a uh, uh, FXDP action, yeah, I can say okay, I get it directly in the user space, or I do it in the Linux. But uh, yeah, I need to, I, I need to look into that. Okay, thank you, Alexander. Yeah, thanks.